Hello, and welcome to today's webinar, How to Ensure Position Accuracy of GNSS Remote Feature Locations in Any Setting. Today's event is hosted by GPS World Magazine and our sponsor of the event, Laser Technology. I'm Kelly Limpert from North Coast Media, Senior Content Marketing Specialist for GPS World, and I'll be today's moderator. Before we get started, I wanted to let you know that today's webinar will be recorded. You are currently in a listen-only mode. A recording of this webinar will be posted to gpsworld.com slash webinars and will also be emailed to you tomorrow. Now, I'd like here's how you can participate during today's presentation. Please notice the Q&A panel in the lower left-hand corner of your console. If you have a question, type it in the panel's text box, then click Submit to place your question in queue. We encourage you to ask questions uh, during the presentation. We will address these questions at the end of the presentation during the Q&A portion. Questions submitted during registration have already gone to our speakers and may be covered during the presentation. If you experience any technical difficulties during today's event, you may use the same Q&A panel on your screen to submit your issue, and assistant producer Allison Barwatz or I will personally assist you. GPS World's Twitter feed is also placed on the right-hand side of your screen. You may use the hashtag GPSWorldWebinar on Twitter to submit questions during today's webinar or to enter in discussions with other attendees. You may also learn about our speakers by viewing their bios in the panel located in the upper left-hand corner of your console. Now, I'd like to introduce you to today's speakers. Derek Rash is a Senior Product Manager at Laser Technology. Derek provides a key focus on the understanding of business needs and practices within the professional measurement and mapping industry for laser technology. For more than 20 years, Derek has provided field, field to office product solutions for various industries, including electric utilities, public works, forestry, construction, and mining. Also today, we have Dan Colbert, Application Engineer at Trimble Geospatial. Dan has spent 19 years developing, deploying, and supporting field solutions for geospatial data collection. And that's it for me. Uh, I'd like to turn today's present presentation over to Derek. Derek, take it away. All right, well, thanks so much, Kelly. And also, thanks, GPS World, for hosting this webinar. And everybody listening online today. I uh, really appreciate you guys' time. To time. Uh, so in today's presentation, we're going to cover how professional laser rangefinders can be implemented into your data collection workflow. The when, how, and expected outcome. Learn about capturing remote features safely from one location, and know what that position accuracy is from that, for that remote feature. I've got Dan today. Uh, I thank Dan for jumping on to the webinar. He's going to simulate this laser workflow within Trimble's new version of TerraFlex. So who is laser technology? Well, uh, <clears throat> we design, manufacture, and distribute professional laser range finders, speed guns, and sensors, uh, all, of, all from a suburb here in Denver, Colorado. Um, early on, we've made range finders for the sports op optics companies to develop, develop for that hunt and golf markets you might be familiar with. Uh, but in this industry, we, we increase that accuracy so they're more professional and professional use. Now, we've got partners all across the world uh, that need support and service. And so we have service centers all in a lot of different locations. Uh, we have them in Ireland, Brazil, Europe, and, uh, and all over Asia. So we've got a lot of different partners across the world, and one of the main partners we've been working with is, is Trimble. Uh, we've been working with Trimble for over 20 years, uh, supplying and supporting that LTI Trimble product solutions for our customers. I think I've been working with you, Dan, I think maybe 15 to 20 years, I think over all, over all these years, and a great support uh, for, of laser technology. So what is in a laser range finder? Uh, first off, is a, it's a laser sensor. Um, so we use the pulse technology or reflectorless technology. So we can make, get a range or distance to any type of surface, and uh, we do not require a reflector or a second person to get in that. We have models that have different accuracies that I'll cover, and also different range capabilities. So again, this is reflectorless technology, uh, class one iSafe. Also built in these uh, range finders is, is an accelerometer or a tilt sensor. Now this measures static forces such as gravity, so it's allowed to be used as that tilt sensor. So we calibrate that zero 
horizon there. And then with the uh, the sensor, it is able to measure is plus or minus, uh, you know, inclination degrees. I'll probably use use inclination and tilt uh, throughout the presentation. And then also in other models of our laser range finders, we've incorporated a compass sensor. Uh, this compass sensor measures magnetic north readings with no pitch or roll limitations because it can be turned it almost upside down and still maintain its accurate uh, azimuth readings. So this is no words we can get the degree of azimuth. So what does that look like? What do these sensors look like in, when you're taking these measurements? Uh, here's a couple diagrams that I put out here. Um, the laser sensor measures slope distance, uh, FD, or your line of sight distance. So wherever that you're aiming at, we're just going to give you that measurement to the, to the object. Uh, the tilt sensor measures inclination, the angle of tilt, uh, degree of inclination. You can see on that bottom left diagram, when you take a measurement, we get that slope distance and inclination values. And with those two values, we have to calculate, the instrument calculates that vertical distance and that horizontal distance, all with the press of a button. Now, when we incorporate the compass sensor in different models, you can see over the right diagram, that's our 3D lasers. And now you see that AZ value, degree of azimuth. Again, all these values are measured at one time. And there's other two values, that vertical distance and horizontal distance, are calculated within the instrument. Not only do we do measurements, uh, we do have some onboard routines within the laser range finder, so you can capture some different attribute data. Uh, one of the main ones we've got built in is what we call a three-point height routine. Uh, looking at the diagram, what we need to do is we need to take a measurement to the object. And then we're going to do a base angle and then a top angle. And with that, the instrument will automatically calculate that height routine. So this routine does like an auto sequence. As soon as I get that distance, it auto sequences to an inclination. And I do a base, and then I do a top. Now, you don't have to do base to top. You can do top down. But it'll still calculate a positive height, height value. One good thing about the, uh, the in this routine or best practice is if you need to do multiple height measurements on this uh, utility pole here, what we do is the best way to do that is you get a distance to the object, and then you do that base angle, and then I'll do that top angle, the first attachment point, and I'll get the height. Then you, all you have to do is back up one one setting there, and then I can redo that top angle, so I can get another height routine, and everything's just. I've established that distance to the object, that base angle to it, and then I can just do multiple uh, top angles to get multiple heights. So I don't have to repeat that routine each time. Another routine we've got built in, uh, we call missing line, or we need to find the, the distance between two remote objects. Uh, this uh, diagram here, what I'm showing here is with our 2D lasers. Um, so, so it's more of a vertical 2D missing line routine. That's uh, a two shot. Uh, I'll take, if I want to know the slope of the hill or the height of that hill also, I can take a measurement to the top of it and then to the base. And the instrument's going to automatically calculate everything you see there in the dotted line. It's going to ca calculate that, the length of it, uh, ca calculate that vertical distance, and also calculate the distance between those two, two shots, uh, that horizontal distance value. We're also able to calculate the, the slope percent. Uh, we have a, a setting in here, not just to get the length, but we can also get that grade of the hill, too. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's a different setting within the uh, laser range finders that we have. Now, once we incorporate the compass sensor in, in the units, uh, it turns it into a 3D laser range finder. So it expands those measurement routines we can do. Uh, one of the measurement routines with this is now we can do spans, uh, like our 3D missing line routine. So if I want to know the distance between these two remote poles, I stand in a safe location away from it. I take a measurement to the pole to the right, and then I take a measurement to the pole to the left. And from that, the instrument will calculate those values you see there, all those different values. So you can, you can get all the, uh, all the calculations done on board. So we in introduce that compass sensor into the unit that turns it into a full uh, 3D tool. So what do these look like, uh, the, the, the models themselves? Uh, this True Pulse 200 series is, is, the, 
is our flagship products. Um, the True Pulse 200 X, as you can see, we've got different range accuracy. It's our most accurate uh, pulse laser range finder we have. Uh, you, you see down there, plus or minus an inch and a half uh, for the for the range accuracy. Uh, distances, you can see the different models. So range, we can get up to on the 200 X. The, the range is very far. Uh, one thing on this model is does range very far, but what we're doing is try, we we can acquire smaller smaller targets at longer distances with this unit and still maintain these accuracies over over distances. Uh, different ratings, environmental ratings. Uh, that's not supposed to be plus or minus IP55, but it, it, I mean that's a so they are waterproof, uh, ruggedized units uh, for the True Pulse series. When we put the compass inside, now we've got the three sensors uh, in the units, and we call this line the True Pulse 360 models. These two models, you can see the accuracies are very similar uh, in range, uh, eight inches. Uh, the big uh, spec specification to note is the azimuth accuracy. Our units are now plus or minus a half a degree in the, in the, in the azimuth accuracy. Uh, the main difference between these two models, the True Pulse 360R, the one on the left, it's the IP rating is the waterproof uh, ruggedized housing. And so what, and that's, a vert and that's a horizontal orientation also. So, there's a lot of customers that like to use the, like the binocular style looking through these range finders versus the, the vertical uh, that's on the uh, right hand side on the True Pulse 360. So how does this get to play? How do you start incorporating lasers into the into the uh, into this workflow? I'm just going to talk about the typical G, you know workflow utilizing GPS or GNSS receivers. Uh, I think a lot of people use this workflow. I mean, this is the, the typical workflow is to walk up to the feature that you need to uh, position and then you know make sure the equipment's all right and you're, you're at a good good signal uh, make sure you're not in certain areas uh, a safe area is the biggest thing uh, get that signal type on your notes make sure uh, the position accuracy is within your tolerances that are needed and verify everything's good and then now you'll walk to the next feature that needs to be mapped and you'll repeat these steps. So it's a walk to each feature, collect the data you need to, and then can and, and repeat. There's also a lot of applications where everybody's using drones. That's been, I mean, over the years, you see this more and more uh, to collect uh, data in the field. So I'll just I kind of go down a typical workflow utilizing the drones. Um, you know, do a pre-flight inspection, make sure you covered all your liabilities. Uh, you know, any more flying over private properties are more difficult, I'm sure. Uh, and plus, at this time, just just having drones in the air, everybody's questioning something. Well, that's up there. You got to set some survey control points, launch that plan, and bring it back, and then check your data. So um, you might have to do some post processing. Uh, the big thing that uh, I've talked to customers and, and field workers that the you know, flying over canopy, they might not be able to get all those assets underneath there. You know, maybe any utilities or, or water valves that might be under canopies don't not always picked up by uh, utilize the drones. So there's a lot of different environmental conditions out there that come into play with those different workflows. Um, one of the big ones, you know, it's always about safety. We hear that uh, over and over. Um, the other is just limited access to private property. Uh, any more kind of uh, I've seen people trying to collect uh, you know positions on private property and you, you've got grandma coming out there asking questions uh, or, you know on the phone with somebody so it's always uh, you, you get those difficulties of uh, getting those positions especially on the back easements of, of properties um, or different terrain uh, steep terrain I don't really want to walk up there but I need to position that so there's different ways uh, that you know that all these different conditions come into play with that those typical workflows I just talked about. So that leads into how do lasers assist in that workflow, uh, especially with all those different conditions. Uh, what we do is we've we've called it the uh, just laser offset mapping feature, um, and we've been incorporating this feature in a lot of the Trimble solutions over the years uh, that the, the Parasync had this uh, laser offset feature in there. Uh, so, but the basics are you, you occupy a position in a nice safe location. Uh, you get that coordinate. 
And it all it depends on that app, that GIS app, if it's got that laser interface built in uh, for this for this function. Then you go ahead and tap uh, offset, and then you measure the object. Uh, with those measurements the laser gives you, you know, that distance, uh, the, the inclination or elevation, and the azimuth direction. And with the app will know its current location, and the value the laser gives you is able to calculate that remote uh, coordinate. So I can stand in a nice safe location with a good signal and take multiple offsets. I can take just stand in one area, take measurements, and follow the workflow within the, within the app. So that kind of leads us to what's that look like? How's that mounted on a pole? Um, our lasers are, you know, you can see they're very small handheld units, and you can mount them right into the pole, so it's very seamless. It's right underneath the different receivers and above the data collector device, so it can all be, be integrated right there. And we interface with a lot of different devices, all, all via Bluetooth that we'll talk about later, which, which devices we're able to interface with different operating systems. But the biggest thing is to position that remote feature, uh, reduce that liabilities. And, but the big question is how to maintain that precision accuracy uh, with these offsets. You know, it's great that I can take these measurements to it with these different lasers, but how do I know what that uh, offset accuracy is? And that's something Dan's going to talk about here with the, with the, with the new uh, version of Teraflex. So I'm going to go ahead and let uh, Dan explain. Thanks, Derek. Um, yeah, I appreciate it. Thanks again for uh, for uh, inviting me and uh, having me part of this uh, this webinar. And I appreciate everybody online uh, as well today. Um, one thing I'm gonna I'm gonna step through here in just a little bit uh, the 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 Trimble implementation of uh, the laser offset workflow in uh, in Teraflex, as Derek alluded to. Um, but one thing I want to make sure of is that uh, that you get a little bit of information about what Teraflex is, in case you're not familiar. Um, and, and basically, Teraflex is a, is a web-based application uh, for the authoring of data collection forms, and then a mobile application running on iOS, Android, and Windows uh, to, um, uh, that the field users work, to, work with to, uh, to capture that, that, that GIS data. Uh, for more information about Trimble Teraflex, you can visit uh, Trimble.com or contact any one of our, um, our, our uh, highly motivated and, and uh, and available distribution partners around the world. Um, so again, today I'll be focusing strictly on the uh, the the, uh, the laser offset capture workflow. Um, and it, another thing too is that I wanted to uh, to point out is that this workflow is uh, is specific to uh, Trimble Teraflex and can be used with any Trimble GNSS receiver uh, at any accuracy level. So you'll see a couple of different uh, a couple of different screenshots uh, that indicate different accuracy levels. Um, and all that really matter means is that you can use the existing Trimble hardware that you have today um, and combine it with, uh, with Trimble Teraflex and have access to this workflow. So it's a highly flexible, highly uh, scalable um, solution for you to use with uh, the existing hardware that you have today. Uh, so with that, I'll just kind of step into this and a little bit of uh, a little bit more about what uh, what Derek uh, captured uh, already. But uh, we see three main challenges that uh, that users need to overcome in the field. The first one is access and safety, where the um, something like a, a a manhole in the center of the street represents um, a hazard in some way, where walking in the middle of the road is dangerous, or closing the road to traffic might be expensive or prohibitive. Um, and we need to overcome that. Uh, the next one is that uh, that you're operating in, in in environments where GNSS is just either inaccessible or or very or very difficult. Things like uh, tree canopies or building uh, building obstructions. Uh, so you need to capture the location of a tree, but you can't physically stand underneath it without getting uh, without uh, compromising your GNSS uh, accuracy. And the third one is uh, is just simple efficiency. That uh, there's lots of lots of features to capture. Uh, and you'd like to do that in, in as most efficient way as possible. Uh, one way that you, one example is that uh, you might need to capture the location of every tree in a park, um, and, uh, and and walking to every tree or uh, walking to every feature might be uh, uh, would would take a long time. When in fact you could just set up in the in a in a uh, single location and capture each one of those uh, remotely. So. Uh, offsets and Teraflex uh, aim to aim to solve all three of those problems, where uh, we can position ourselves in places where we're not compromising safety, um, 
we also give ourselves the best opportunity for high quality GNSS positions by stepping away from features that would obstruct it otherwise. Uh, and then to, uh, to capture the remote location of multiple features from a single location. Um, those are uh, those are the three main um, the, the three main challenges that we're that we're we aim to overcome with uh, with offset the offset workflow in Terraflex. And specific to the LTI laser range finders, uh, we support uh, both the the 200 and uh, the 200 series and the three the, three, the 360 series that Derek talked about. Um, and uh, um, we'll talk a, a bit more uh, near the end of the presentation about when each of these is is uh, most applicable and what uh, types of workflows or types of environments are they most suited to. So I'll I'll um, I'll let you read through this one and uh, and then we'll capture a bit more of that at the end. But what I'd like to jump into now is kind of the uh, um, the, the 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 offset workflow uh, as we've implemented it. The the old way of doing offset workflows, and in some cases uh, there are uh, other softwares as well that do it this way as well, um, where we're at, we ask the user up front what type of offset they'd like to uh, they'd like to capture. If we if we have the luxury of having a, a TruePulse 360, we can uh, we can capture a single shot distance and bearing, uh, which is efficient and less accurate, uh, but but potentially less accurate because of the azimuth. Um, or we could ask them to do a distance distance bearing uh, or distance distance offset, uh, which requires two shots and two setups. Uh, it's a bit more accurate, but it's uh, it's a, a bit less efficient because of the two setups. Either way, the old way of doing this, uh, we we asked the user what type of offset they wanted to they wanted to do before they started. And in contrast, what we've implemented with Terraflex is uh, what we're calling the adaptive offset method where the, the workflow in Terraflex really adapts to, uh, to the user, the project, the environment, uh, the feedback that the user gets, um, and allows the user to take uh, a second shot to refine uh, the, the, uh, the offset if it's required. And it's all based on uh, a lot of information that's being presented to the user in real time. Things like the error, the error estimate now combines the, uh, the, the GNSS error and the laser measurement error. When we connect to a, uh, a laser technology laser, uh, we query what type of laser it is, uh, whether it's a 200 or a 360, and we apply the, the appropriate um, error estimate to your shot uh, and combine that, uh, combine that together uh, to provide to the user so that the user can make uh, high quality, good uh, real-time decisions about, uh, about what, uh, what they'd like to do next. In addition to the adaptive offset method, the, uh, the, the workflow is entirely map-based. Uh, and along with the map-based uh, workflow and graphical, uh, graphical interface is a, a wizard along the bottom of the screen that guides the user through the steps of the offset measurements. Um, and all of that feedback happens directly on the map. So you see your measurement, you see the distances, uh, and you see the error estimates uh, as well in real time, all, uh, all on that map. And what I'd like to show you now is uh, just a simulation of the uh, of the offset itself, the offset workflow uh, through Terraflex. So I'm going to talk you through uh, what a user would see uh, using a uh, doing a very simple uh, a very simple offset workflow. So uh, as I said before, it's kind of a, a wizard-driven graphical interface, um, and what you'll see in Terraflex now is uh, in the uh, in the geometry capture window is a new icon that's available when you're connected to a, uh, a laser technology laser. If you're not connected to one, you won't see it. So <laughs> if you fire up Terraflex and you're looking for that icon, you won't see it unless you unless you're uh, you're paired with a uh, uh, a laser technology laser. Um, so uh, pressing on that button enters the user into, uh, into the workflow. And the first screen that you see is along the bottom gives you the user some indication about what needs to happen. So it's asking the user to move to a suitable location and then log a, uh, the reference position. This is the position in a, in a, uh, a safe and, uh, and GNSS accessible area. So as soon as you do that, as soon as you move, tap the log button. And then the next step indicates that the user is uh, that the the software is looking for um, the uh, the shot for from the laser. So at this point, you shoot the feature with the laser, and 
then the offset is captured and the information is shown on the screen. So uh, the immediate, again, the immediate feedback is, is shown on the screen uh, and the, uh, the combined accuracy indication is also indicated on the screen. So in this case, it was a 12 meter shot with an accuracy estimate of uh, 23 centimeters. You can see in the top left that the GNSS accuracy was about two centimeters and we added the, G the inaccuracy uh, or the accuracy estimate based on the laser that was being used to that and rolled it all up into a single, uh, a single a uh, accuracy estimate. In addition, uh, we also um, uh, evaluate the accuracy against any accuracy rules that were previously set up for that feature. Uh, so in, uh, in the office, when editing the data collection form for this particular feature, uh, we can specify a, an accuracy uh, requirement. And if that accuracy requirement is met, we indicate that to the user. And you'll see what that looks like when that's not met uh, here at the, at the end. At this point in the workflow, the user has the option to, at this point, accept the feature. Everything has been mapped appropriately. Uh, it meets the accuracy requirements, and we can simply end the, end the, uh, uh, the data collection uh, or the offset for this feature. If the, if, the, uh, if the workflow requires and the accuracy isn't, it d isn't quite met, the user also has the option to refine the feature. So we don't have to go back and, and start over again to do a second shot. Uh, all we do is tap the refine button and it automatically kicks us into the, the two shot offset workflow. At this, in this, at this point, we follow the on-screen on instructions uh, as well as the graphical indi uh, indications on the map to guide the user to the optimal location for the second reference position. So we'll do that. We'll move to the second reference position uh, and log another, uh, and log a second, uh, we'll, we'll move to a second location and log a second reference position. So tap the log button. And again, it's waiting for the laser rangefinder to capture the, uh, to capture the offset. And once we shoot the laser rangefinder, uh, the offset is then captured and the remote feature location is shown on the map. Um, we then roll up the accuracy indication uh, and provide the user with feedback about the accuracy and whether it meets the accuracy requirement for that particular feature. So again, an, a, a, a huge improvement in the, uh, in the usability of the offset workflow is the ability to, um, to adapt to uh, the environment, to the requirements of the feature, uh, and the, the capabilities of the, of, the, uh, of the laser rangefinder and guides you through the, uh, through the workflow appropriately. Another uh, key component of the adaptive workflow is that any time the user can step back through the workflow and recapture, uh, a, log an, a, a different GNSS position, it can, you can uh, retake the, uh, the laser rangefinder shot. So at any time, you can walk back, step back through the workflow to, uh, to correct any uh, potential mistakes. Perhaps you shot the, the, the wrong feature um, or you, your setup wasn't quite right, uh, you can step back through that at any time and recorrect your mistakes in real time. Uh, a, a hugely uh, important and, and, and massive time saver when it, comes to, uh, when it comes to doing offsets, especially those that involve uh, multiple setups. Here's a, just a quick view of um, uh, the, uh, what, the, what an exception might look like. So the accuracy threshold in this case uh, is not met for this particular feature. So we can choose then to refine it and take another, uh, another shot, uh, or we can step back and, and potentially uh, uh, move to a, a, a location where our GNSS accuracy is better um, uh, and, uh, and improve, our, improve our, uh, our results right there in real time in the field. There's a couple of specifics um, as it relates to the, the capabilities of the different um, uh, range finders. So the, the, the True Pulse 360 has the internal compass for azimuth, and it doesn't require a second shot because we can use the distance and azimuth from that in a single reading. However, if you do decide to use a two-shot offset method, uh, we'll take the azimuth readings from both of those and we'll automatically calculate the, uh, the appropriate intersection of the, of the, uh, the two potential intersections of the, um, of the offsets. If you do use a True Pulse 200, uh, because it doesn't have an internal compass, uh, Terraflex already knows and automatically guides the user through the uh, through the capture of the two shot uh, the two shot offset workflow. So you don't need to uh, to train users to do things differently with different equipment. 
and uh, and it automatically adapts to it and and walks the user through the capture uh, the appropriate capture and selection of uh, of the offsets uh, using using the two shot manual or the two shot offset um, when it comes to the to the True Pulse 200. So kind of in summary, the uh, offsets in Teraflex um, are meant to be the most usable and adaptable um, workflow uh, for GNSS offsets um, available on the market today uh, with on-screen guides that make it easy to, to learn and relearn. That's very important, especially if you're not doing offsets all the time. Uh, walking through, and you can see through that, uh, that user interface, walking through those um, uh, those steps of the workflow is very easy. You can pick this up and immediately learn it uh, every uh, the first time and then every subsequent time, regardless of the amount of time in between them. Um, the uh, the 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 combination of the GNSS and laser accuracy estimates uh, make the uh, the user feedback and uh, the efficiency of capturing quality data uh, in the field. Um, more, more, uh, uh, more accessible than uh, than ever before. So, uh, again, the the idea for for offsets in Teraflex is to capture better data safely, more efficiently, and with greater confidence than uh, than ever before. Uh, so, with just a couple of more um, points about um, Teraflex and laser compatibility and uh, and different platforms, I'll turn it back over to Derek at this point. Yeah. Hey. Thanks, Dan. Yeah, the one thing I really like about this app is, is like what Dan talked about is the integration. The app knows uh, which laser you're talking to. So when you connect to it uh, via Bluetooth, it says, okay, I know it's a True Pulse 200X, um, and I know it's got this type of accuracies. So that's what's really neat about the uh, the app itself. Um, also, I think it takes a lot of that guesswork out of the, out of the game, uh, collecting data. Uh, like you said, like. I can do that distance bearing one if if, if tolerances aren't uh, that remote position tolerances aren't good. It, it automatically I can take that into the next uh, distance distance method. So it's really adaptive uh, application utilizing our lasers and, and the knowledge of just the communication. And so with it, speaking of communication, uh, you can see here that the different operating systems of Teraflex of they, of course they're on all the different operating systems. But uh, the True Pulse 200X is the only one that works with iOS, uh, with that, that version of Teraflex. All the other lasers do interface with Windows and Android versions, but again, that 200X version um, is the is the uh, one that works with iOS. So all different applications. Where where can I use this? Um, you know, it's not always about you know not always about where there's might be a, a signal impaired, um, a GNSS signal impaired, uh, it could be used at any time. Uh, any time that the, you, know, you set your tolerances, your position tolerances, and, you, and if it fits into the, those accuracies, uh, you can use the laser offset uh, mapping a lot of different things. Uh, street lights, uh, forest, like uh, Dan was talking about, uh, a lot of trees. Um, locations on that steep terrain, again, you don't want to walk up there or can't walk up there, but you still need a position, get the remote position of uh, objects or assets. Uh, one thing I, I see, I, probably a lot of people have seen the guy in the in the middle of the road uh, with the with this setup, uh, GPS pole standing over a water valve or anything. Uh, I'll age myself right now, but don't really want to be playing Frogger out there, uh, avoiding the traffic, uh, or don't want to shut it down like Dan talked about. It's, you can stand in a safe location on the side of the road and take these measurements. Um, so it's a real easy application to do. Uh, there's no real guideline of every application this can be used at or which ones to use and which ones not to use. Uh, you, you can incorporate in that workflow as long as it fits into your tolerance needs. Uh, different uh, breaking it down by model. Uh, we've kind of done that a couple times here. Uh, but the big thing on the True Pulse 200 models, they do not have that compass, so they're not affected by any magnetic interferences. Uh, but it is going to be that uh, that distance distance workflow. Uh, so. We suggest the fewer features uh, per location, and they have them more spread out when you can do that. So when you're getting those two different uh, G GPS coordinates, uh, then you take the offsets. So you want those more spread out. So that's where that the, the 200s come into play more. The 360, uh, one thing is that the compass can be affected by magnetic, magnetic interferences. So if you're working in heavy construction zones, this might not be the tool to be used. It could uh, affect that to position accuracy. 
but I mean it's great for densely populated features. Uh, a lot of trees or a lot of objects or places you know I just don't want to walk to quickly. So that map more, move less uh, comes into play. Uh, utilizing that distance bearing uh, work, that, that method that's uh, built into Terraflex. Uh, Dan talked a great job about that, that, that position accuracy. That, that's always the question people ask. Well, what's that, what's that accuracy of that remote position I take a measurement with? And with Terraflex being all built in, and you already, you already know that, we've taken it a step further also of just kind of breaking down. Um, we have a, a, a white paper here that we were going to be, sh that uh, laser technology is going to share with uh, everybody that registered. Uh, kind of the best practices uh, when to do a user calibration of the, the compass, like when you get onto the site, you can do a uh, compass calibration to eliminate as much, a lot of that magnetic interferences there. Um, and then just the different best practice of uh, integrating with GPS devices. Uh, the big thing that to talk about is that is which model is used for which mapping method and what that accuracy is going to be. Uh, I just I did a snippet here of the accuracy, you know, at 150 feet and what those accuracy, that position accuracy is going to be uh, based on. Uh, and this is just a white paper we put together a while back. So it's uh, something that we'll share. Uh, and you can see, especially like when you do uh, longer distances, uh, take uh, if you're taking you know 300 feet shots uh, offsets, that accuracy is going to uh, decrease uh, on the on the on the on that position. So we'll be sharing this uh, with everybody uh, in the next week or so. I just kind of Derek, just uh, one one on. yeah. Yeah, one one thing to add too is that you've seen a lot of uh, a lot of the pictures on the on the slideshow that uh, that indicate that the the laser is mounted to a uh, to a pole. Um, so there's lots of uh, the, the not just the laser, but the, uh, the the complete setup and accessory packages that are available to uh, to make sure that every time you take a shot, it's as it's as accurate and as uh, um, as consistent as possible. There's uh, there's lots of different ways to uh, to mount things. Uh, so a lot of that stuff can be captured and can be uh, can be answered for you by uh, your local your local distribution partners. They have all the tools and all the experience necessary to help you uh, create a setup that's uh, that's easily rep uh, replicatable and uh, and gives you the best uh, the best possible uh, data that you that you can every single time. Yeah, exactly. It's kind of like this mount, the, the way we've got it mounted here, it's all streamlined, uh, so that's a, you know, there's no offsets of the lasers that you've got to put in there. Um, so, yeah, that's a very good point, Dan. And th this is, you know, kind of bringing it all together, uh, what we talked about. Uh, we hear safety, safety, safety. Uh, you know, hear it from field, field crews, you know, uh, you taking measurements on busy highways. Uh, drivers do not pay attention to the orange vests. Uh, they really don't. So. It's always good. This way, you can map. Uh, you can collect data from a safe location. Um, also, we talked about just being more accurate and efficient. Uh, that efficiency, that's the way the workflow is done in the Terraflex and with our lasers. Uh, it's real simple to integrate with. It's a Bluetooth connection. Uh, these lasers don't have a lot of buttons to be pushing. It's a pretty simple, like I showed you, of getting those different uh, values. And we do integrate, like Dan talked about, all the different. Uh, Receivers that Trimble has, uh, we, our lasers interface that, that way pretty easy. Um, and just to wrap up of some of the trends we've been seeing, uh, just the apps are all going over all different operating systems. Uh, so are our lasers, and our lasers are getting more accurate. Uh, we do have some models that use a different technology called phase technology, and our accuracies are down to millimeter range. Uh, be, they can work indoors and outdoors, and so these trends of getting more accurate lasers. Uh, distances and more accurate position offsets are always coming. And so with that, I'd like to really thank uh, Dan for participating in today's webinar uh, and GPS World uh, for hosting. And at this time, I'll go ahead and turn it back over to Kelly for our Q&A session. Thanks, guys. It was a great presentation. Uh, let's dive into some questions now. Uh, first off, what are some things to consider when planning a remote data collection session? I can take that, Dan, if you want to. Um, so things to consider, I mean, there are several things to consider. Uh, but the first, I think the biggest thing is that what is your position accuracy requirements? Uh, like, 
you can set that up early in TerraFlex of what what, what those uh, tolerances are. But you kind of need to find that. And then that will help define what laser is used uh, and what method is best. Um, if you're going to use that distance bearing single offset method or the distance distance. Uh, so which which method will work best uh, for your accuracy tolerances. As for the applications, uh, it's the workflow can work for almost any scenario. So not only when the you know signal might be impaired, or you cannot walk to the, you know, or you cannot walk to the feature, you can use you can use it for safety factors, or just to speed up that uh, that field time. Good deal. Anything to add, Dan? No, Derek summed it up well. Awesome. Well, I'm going to point this next question at you, Dan, then. Uh, one question that came in was, can we get support in TerraFlex for LTI rangefinder distances to go into fields? It'd be nice to drop distances into TerraFlex field. Uh, yeah, that, that's that's one we uh, that we're getting we're getting often here. So uh, at the beginning of the presentation, Derek indicated all the all the different types of measurements that the lasers are capable of, things like heights and missing lines, um, and uh, and several of our users, many of our users, have indicated the, the the desire to take those measurements and put them into an attribute field. So instead of using the laser for an offset. Uh, they would like to, uh, to to capture the height of the remote feature, like a power pole or a tree, um, and put it into an attribute field into a form. Uh, what I can say is that uh, that we've got a lot of exciting new things planned for uh, for TerraFlex and uh, an additional support for uh, for workflows that that uh, that include the laser rangefinders are part of those. Um, and we've been in close communication with. Uh, with LTI uh, and and our development team to uh, to come up with really innovative, simple, easy to use workflows to capture uh, not just offsets but also uh, uh, but also um, uh, attributes uh, using the laser rangefinder. So uh, not available today, but something that is uh, that has definitely been asked for. Uh, and we and like I said, we've got some exciting things planned for future releases. Well, definitely something to look out for then. Next question For up. Sure. Uh, <laughs> uh, next up is: Is there an iOS version of TerraFlex with LTI laser offset solution? Um, yeah, I just want to state, uh, yeah, the, the, the TerraFlex does work on all operating systems. Uh, the one thing I'd like to on that is making sure the, the the only laser that does work with the iOS version of TerraFlex is that True Pulse 200X. Uh, that, that's been that Bluetooth module has been certified by Apple, um, so which is loops in itself. Uh, so, but that is the only laser. So you, the, you know, with with that, you're going to be using that distance distance mapping method uh, that we talked about. Gotcha. The next step. Uh, what is the relation between distance and accuracy for laser rangefinders? Um, yeah, the the relationship between distance and accuracy. Um, if you're just using the laser for just you know measurements, you know uh, just getting distances and, and heights, our stated accuracy remains the same over that range of the laser. Um, we also do have some indicators inside the laser, um, inside the display that will let you know if the accuracy has, has been it's been compromised, or it's not getting the uh, stated accuracy of that, that you saw in other slides. Um, so, just for the distance accuracy, that's the laser. But when you're when you integrate it with that it, with the position, uh, that kind of brings us back to that um, brings us back to that the how far you shoot out to, how what what's that uh, that range you're taking measurements to. Um, so, with the uh, the specifications of a tilt sensor and the compass sensor and everything there, you can see when you do take longer measurements, that position accuracy will uh, decrease or it will get bigger uh, on that position accuracy. So uh, when it comes just down to uh, with distance and accuracy, uh, it's the, our stated accuracy is here, but it does happen when you incorporate in that position and take that offset. Uh, it can be decreased as you take longer, uh, longer measurements. Gotcha, gotcha. 
So we're getting a lot of questions coming in. I'd like to see an engaged audience out here. Um, this just came in. Um, is there a way to record a line segment with two laser shots from a single point? Yeah, I'll, I'll jump in on that one. Um, yeah, a great question and a, and a workflow that, um, uh, that that several users have asked for. Uh, today, TerraFlex and the adaptive offset method uh, is uh, is focused on point features only. Uh, again, we've got um, we've got plenty of uh, plenty of new features uh, to include things like um, uh, vert vertex capture for lines and polylines, uh, lines and polygons rather, uh, as well as um, uh, like an anchor point and, and multiple shots. Uh, so there, we we do have plenty of uh, plenty of plans for uh, for future releases for TerraFlex as it relates to uh, to offset capture. Uh, the the current version of TerraFlex uh, and the offset the adaptive offset methods uh, only work for uh, for point features at the moment. Good to know. Taking another one from. Post event questions. Um, how critical is a laser calibration? Yeah, this is Derek. Uh, the laser calibration, um, it's actually pretty critical uh, with the compass. When you want to do a, the user uh, compass calibration is when you get to a new job site. Uh, the best thing to do is it takes about 45 seconds uh, to do this uh, user calibration. Uh, we've got some YouTube videos out there for you to show you how quickly it is to, to calibrate the compass. But we suggest uh, you calibrate it when you get to a new job site. Uh, if you're moving around that job site, uh, you don't need to calibrate it every you know 20 minutes or anything like that. Uh, but if you get up, and, if you drive to a, another new a new site, uh, the best thing to do, best practice, is to get outside, get outside the vehicle, and then calibrate that compass. Uh, one thing we do uh, have on the laser itself is there's an indicator inside the scope that uh, that uh, will tell you if the compass um, needs to be calibrated. So the laser actually monitors the battery voltage, uh, the temperature. It also manages some different noises coming off of utility lines, and it can, can, can kind of sense if it needs to be uh, calibrated. Uh, it's our, kind of a the true vector compass technology we've got built in, and there's a little indicator flashes at you to say, "Hey, let's let's calibrate the compass." Um, and again, it's a it's a 45 second uh, routine uh, that you're able to do that. So the best practice is again to just calibrate the compass when you get to a new job site. Good to keep in mind. Okay, we'll do a couple more here. Uh, this just came in. Uh, can a user manual manually calculate an offset in TerraFlex if needed? Yeah, an, another great question that uh, that some users have uh, have looked for. Um, currently, today the the offset methodology, the adaptive offset method, requires a uh, the user to use a uh, a laser to input the uh, the offset uh, components. So there is no uh, manually uh, manual entering of uh, of offset. Uh, so, say if you wanted to use a tape and a and a compass or a uh, or or just a tape to do a, you know a multiple distance uh, resection. Um, TerraFlex does not yet support the uh, the manual uh, entry of offset calculations. Gotcha, gotcha. All right, last question here. Uh, can we see laser offset metadata in the office? Uh, another another great question, um, probably from a user that uh, is familiar with uh, TerraSync and Pathfinder Office. Um, the uh, the ability to see uh, the individual uh, components that make up the geometry of a remote feature. So the GNSS, the originally logged GNSS position, and then each of the uh, the laser rangefinder shots and, uh, and and vectors uh, is something that's not yet available in um, in uh, TerraFlex in the office, um, but it is absolutely something that we would like to include in, in future releases. So, um, again, this is this adaptive offset method kind of sets the stage for uh, for what I think is some exciting functionality and exciting uh, user feedback and and, uh, and and additional workflows for TerraFlex going forward. So, um, 
we're scratching the surface here, and I'm, I look forward to, uh, to to offering all of these uh, these these great suggestions that we're getting from our uh, from our user base in the future. Good deal. All right, guys, is there any place where someone uh, interested in any of these uh, product services, all that fun stuff, can go to learn more? Yeah, I'll jump in real quick. Uh, again, mentioned we have a, uh, a lot of common partners that uh, resell our equipment, uh, and, and they love getting out and doing demos um, when they're when possible uh, to show this interaction with the lasers and the, the Trimble hardware. Uh, so one is uh, you can find a lot of our our similar partners on our LTI's webpage. You can see here, uh, and, and also just uh, you can email us and ask us a few questions, but. Yeah, we have a lot of different, uh, a lot of common partners throughout the world that uh, that support our this solution, this uh, yeah, the Trimble and Laser Technology solution. Absolutely, and when it comes to uh, when it comes to Trimble, the uh, uh, you can download a uh, a free version of Trimble Terraflex uh, if you're not already a user, um, and it gives you there is a trial period that is. Um, uh, that is fully functional. If you have a laser and a Trimble GNSS receiver, uh, you can try this entire uh, experience uh, experience out for yourself. Um, so it's a uh, it's a it's a great way to uh, a great way to get your hands on it, uh, and it doesn't cost you a thing. But uh, again, as Derek said, um, visit the Trimble website as well. Um, we have a uh, uh, a dealer locator that will help you find uh, your local reseller. Uh, and again, as Derek said, that they they love to get out and show you this stuff. So um, please reach out and uh, and try this stuff out for yourself. It's the the best way to get uh, uh, to get your uh, to get familiar with it. Oh yeah. All right. Well, thanks, guys, uh, and thank you all for attending today's webinar uh, hosted by GPS World Magazine and our event sponsor, Laser Technology. Reminder, a recording of this webinar will be emailed to you tomorrow and posted to gpsworld.com slash webinars. Upcoming webinars from GPS World will also be available on that page. All right, thank you for attending, and we hope you'll join us for another great webinar. Bye. Bye. Thanks, everybody.